What's going on everybody? Today we're gonna go over how to properly upgrade your fuel pump and uh, your wiring in your FD. So if you are upgrading your fuel pump for whatever reason, these are all the things that you're gonna wanna do. Now, difference of opinions, people will say, oh no, you don't gotta do that. Or oh, it's always been like this and it's been fine on my car and blah, 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 this is, that's fine. But the reality is the inevitability of these latent failures, which I'll go over here shortly, they are going to happen. They're inevitable. So I'm showing you how to defend against that. So when you upgrade your fuel pump, you upgrade it once and you upgrade it fully so that all points of failure for the future are taken care of in one go. Now, it is very extensive. People will question like, man, all that just to upgrade your fuel pump? No, you don't have to do all of this. You really don't. But if you choose not to, just know you're gonna be pulling your fuel pump two, three, four times over the course of uh, your upgrade journey. So it's just advised to do it all in one sweep. So we'll just start here. So say you get your fuel pump hanger out, what you'll see, um, whatever fuel pump you happen to have in there already, uh, likely a stock one, maybe not, I don't know. But it'll be configured like this. It'll have uh, this seat on here. Uh, like I said, the pump will be sitting there. Maybe some wiring to attach it to the factory stuff. You'll see a, a, the factory plug here. Um, you know, so on and so forth. So we'll start from the top. So the first point of failure that you'll, you'll have when you upgrade your fuel pump, um, the factory wiring is not meant to keep up with upgraded pumps. It's just, it's just not, it's old and the pumps are, they're just drawing too much power. So what'll happen eventually is this plug will actually completely just melt itself inside of this bulkhead connector going through uh, the top of the hanger here. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're actually gonna cut this off. We're gonna put a new uh, pass-through here, not a bulkhead connector, but it's just gonna be a pass-through. And we're gonna run all new wiring right through this. So the wiring that comes with most fuel pumps is a little too short to do that with. So what you'll need is a longer version of this. So I'll put a link down below where you can get one of these. They come in many different lengths. Um, this one uh, is an 18 inch. So, uh, it's more than enough wire, but I'll put a link so you can get one of these. Uh, the connector type is Walbro or AEM, which uh, the AEM pumps are default what we use here. Uh, the 51,000 and the 50,200, with the 1200 being the E85 version, the 1000 being the regular. Uh, they're 340s. They're compact. They're pretty quiet. They're very nice. So it's, it's, uh, it's just what we use. So the next point of failure is uh, this seat here. Once we get it apart, I'll show you the pieces that are in here. But this also goes, even on a completely stock car, this also goes. People will troubleshoot the world trying to find out uh, problems with their car when the whole time it's the assembly that's inside of here. It's, a, it's an O-ring, it's some plastic seat, and then obviously this little plastic piece that you see here. Um, the O-ring will fail. It won't hold fuel pressure, so what'll happen is the fuel will go up, it'll hit the O-ring and come right back out. So you have a low fuel pressure condition and you're just, you're all over the place trying to figure out, um, you know, why. So that, that's here on the hanger. Uh, those two things there are really what's most important. I'm gonna show you how to fix those. On the car itself, what you'll have is the actual fuel pump wiring. So putting in independent relays, it's, it's very well known to do this. It's not some revolutionary new thing, but putting in uh, an independent relay and having this power the pump directly off the battery is the preferred method. Same situation with the bulkhead connector on the hanger. Uh, the factory wiring just can't keep up. And then also by doing this, you'll bypass the fuel pump resistor that lives under your brake booster. Uh, Left-hand drive, right-hand drive, it doesn't matter. You'll bypass the fuel pump resistor that lives under the brake booster, and your pump will just be a constant 12 volts always. Now, if you're on a stock ECU, I don't know what it'll do because I've never done it on a stock ECU before. But if you do have an aftermarket ECU doing this mod, uh, we'll throw your map off. You will need a retune because it'll just be way too rich everywhere. So just keep that in mind before you do it. And I'll show you how to do this as well because we're actually going to redo this in this car. All right, so starting with the hanger, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this off. We're going to cut it right here above where it goes from a pipe to this little connector thing here. Now you can use a regular pipe cutter if you want or you can use a um, uh, cutoff disc and just chop it and then clean it up or whatever you want to do. It, it doesn't really matter how you cut it, just cut it. Um, don't cut this like way up here or, or wherever. Cut it as close to this as you can. And of course you pull the fuel pump out first. 
the point of that is because you're going to use a piece of submersible fuel hose, in-tank fuel hose. It's very specific. Deco makes this, uh, Gates makes this. There's a few different people that make this, but do not use regular fuel hose. It has to be submersible fuel hose. It'll be a 5 16 and that's what's going to replace this. So basically like any other fuel pump in like basically every other car. It'll be a section of hose that's going to go here and you don't have to worry about any O-rings or anything and that's just not going to fail. So that'll fix your fuel pressure issue entirely. So we're going to cut this off first. All right, so you see I have the tool on here. I've already been using it a little bit, but stick it on there. Uh, this one isn't big enough to go all the way around, so you start on one side and um, you flip it, and then it'll be like this, and then you just kind of just work it back and forth. And then eventually cuts it off. So nice clean cut. Um, the other side looks just like this. So you can deburr it if you want to. You don't have to. Uh, both outside and inside doesn't really matter. But you can. I'm going to just because. All right. So now that that's done, we'll um, I'll deburr it. I'll clean this up, and I'll throw the pump back on, and then we'll move on to the bulkhead connector. I'll put a link down below to this one as well, but you don't have to use this one. Uh, we've tried other ones that are non, I guess you could say insulated, um, like without this little insert where it's just a, it's just an open pass through. We've used those uh, and potted them using uh, Fippage, the Toyota R RTV, and those work just the same. This, this single piece is actually kind of expensive and we're actually gonna move away from using these because there's no need, but anyway, so this is going to replace our, new, our old connector, this piece here. And we're going to use this instead. And it's going to allow us to pass our wires through the center without having to worry about um, anything, really. This is just our new bulkhead connector. So with connectors like these, people have had problems in the past with what's called wicking, where what will happen is the fuel will actually travel up the wires as it passes through here, and it'll just kind of seep out the top. Um, after looking at how these work, that's not, it, we pretty much confirmed it's, it's been user error this, this whole time. So, uh, the way this works is, uh, the wires go through, they pass through here. And then as this is tightened, kind of like a compression fitting, as this piece here is tightened, the little sponge cake here inside will expand and create a seal on the wires, right? If you're using the incorrect gauge wire or a wire that just doesn't have that thick of a sheathing on it, you actually won't be able to tighten this enough to cause the sponge to expand and create a tight enough seal. So with the, uh, the wiring connectors that we're using for the fuel pump, they're designed to be submersed in fuel because the, the sheathing on the wire is just designed to be submersed in fuel. So it's pretty thick. And in addition to that, the, the wiring on the inside is also pretty thick. I want to say it's a 14 gauge is, a, is what this is. So what you get when you put this in, because it doesn't just slip right through, what you get when you put this in is a tight fit pretty much from the start. And then when you go to tighten this down, you get an even tighter fit. So the wicking issue doesn't, doesn't happen. And even in addition to that, if you didn't completely trust this seal, you can also pot this on the bottom so that wicking just won't be a problem at all because the whole bottom of this is just is, is, uh, filled with RTV. So there's that. So if you've used these in the past and you've had a wicking issue, then... That's likely what your problem is. But anyway, fitting this onto the fuel pump is the next uh, sort of, I wouldn't say issue, but the next thing to do. So what you're not going to do is size this up on top of the pump here while eyeballing it. What you want to do is actually use the nut that will be on the bottom here and size it up because this is the dictating piece because it's the largest. So with the top of the pump, there's not many places you can actually put this new connector because it is, relatively speaking, it is kind of big compared to everything else. Um, your EVAP lines for your fuel pump have to go through here. And then, of course, uh, the connector for the fuel level and all the other stuff. So really, the only place it can go is here next to the, next to the sticker. So what we do is we put them here like that, kind of size them up. And then we use a center punch and we 
center punch it. So the hole is already there. We've already made it. So we're going to go ahead and drill it out. And um, the hole size will be uh, big enough to fit this through, but not slip through. So you kind of want to be able to thread this through the hole after you're done drilling it, uh, just for a tighter fit. We do Loctite the bottom of these just for fun. Uh, they're not going to come off. They're, it's just not. But we do it anyway, just, just for extra precaution. And um, you, you'll see what this looks like when it's all done. Oh, and for ease of drilling, we just use a step drill to, to punch this hole out. It just, it, it walks right through, and once we get to the right size, then, then we're good. We don't, we don't sit here and use a regular drill bits and just, and just run them up. So the hole drilled, according to the step drill, this is a 5 8 hole. And then I use the Dremel just to clean it up just a little bit. Um, put a taper on this side, cleaned up the burrs on this side, and then just walk it around a little bit just to clean it up some. So with the fitting, this one specifically, so when it goes in, see it doesn't just kind of drop right in, you have to twist it in, and that's what you want. Nice firm fit. You have to push a little bit to get it down in there. Eventually it will seat fully in there with a little bit of squish on the o-ring that's on there. Then we're going to take a little bit of red Loctite for no reason and we're going to put a dab of it on the threads on the bottom here. There's no o-ring on the bottom. You can put one if you want but it's not necessary. Put a little bit there. Then we'll take the nut with the um, uh, the bevel side up. We'll just go ahead and thread that on. So you'll do finger tight plus a little bit. All right, and there's your fitting there. So it lives just like that. You can see on the bottom, it's out of the way of everything, top and bottom, the wires are gonna pass through this very nicely. So these are the pieces that you'll have under there, right? Uh, this piece is right on top of the fuel pump, followed by this O-ring, which sits on top of that. Then you have this retainer here that sits on top. Now, when you pull this retainer out, you will see that there's a slit in it. It's not broken. It's meant to be like that. Uh, I don't know what it's for. We can speculate all we want, but it's, it's meant to have the slit. Don't worry about it. This one is not. So if that one's broken, then it's broken. But this is your assembly here. So what will happen is this O-ring will eventually uh, stop doing what O-rings do and do what O-rings do and stop sealing. So what we're doing is we're deleting this entire assembly here and we're eliminating it as the weak point. All right. So that's normally what you have sitting inside of inside of this piece here. And it all sits in there just like that. Right. So obviously that seals against the walls of this and the fuel will go up and pass it or it'll go through it or, or whatever. So we delete this whole thing. Right. And like I said, we're replacing it with a piece of submersible fuel hose, submersible in tank whatever you don't have to use the part numbers that i have listed in the description below but it'd be highly advised because there's no reason not to why innovate anyway so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the fuel pump back on the hanger we're doing this after we drill the holes because metal shavings and as you can see here the wire is ran through and we're going to uh lengthen this out once the fuel pump is back on so uh, we'll put this back lengthen the wires out and then we'll start doing some uh, electrical stuff here we have our completed hanger assembly. So uh, just a note about clamps. Do not use the perforated worm clamps in your fuel pump, or in your fuel tank. Just don't. They're abrasive. Let's put it like that. They will eat the hose up over time, and it's just something you have to go back. The whole point of this is so that once you put this fuel pump back in, you won't see it again until this pump dies or, or you're upgrading your pump. Like There's no reason to go back into the tank after doing this. So that's the whole mentality behind it. Uh, these clamps here are from a Z32. They're old Nissan fuel line clamps, but you could use any other clamp that isn't a perforated worm clamp. Uh, squeeze clamps I don't recommend because those those clamps are meant for OEM stuff, and this isn't that. You know, so so there's that. But here's the completed setup. Uh, as far as the slack in the wires go, um, the slack is very important because that's a uh, 
you're just not meant to have tension on wires like that. They need, these need to be able to move freely and live and not be like rubbed up against anything that you can see they're not. So some slack is good. And these are plenty long where you can put really as much as you, as much as you want, honestly. It just needs to not be pulled uh, completely tight. So when I mentioned about the, the sponge expanding, as you can see, uh, it's got a really tight fit on these wires. If I tugged on these wires, they will not, they, they will not lengthen or, or otherwise. I mean, if I pulled hard enough, I could, but it, it would be a necessary amount of force. So this is what I'm talking about here. If you use a, even the correct gauge wire, let's, let, me, let me take that back. If you use the correct gauge wire, but the uh, sheath on it isn't all that thick, it won't work. So this combination of things here, I can tell you works for sure. Uh, this with that, tightening it down, blah, 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 all that works. So this assembly is ready to be dropped back into, into the tank. And I went ahead and replaced the sock as well, uh, just, just because um, the one that was in there was a little dirty, as you can see. Now these can be cleaned very easily. You can use compressed air, you can use alcohol, you can use a nylon brush, you can use anything and just clean these up. But I have a whole box of like extra socks and, and things like that. So I just, I just replaced it with another one. So this is ready to be reassembled. And then we're gonna go over the wiring portion after this. So independent relay um, connector, we're not going to put just the spades on top of the thing uh, on the prongs. We're going to buy a connector, buy a connector and then we're going to run our wires out. So all the wires coming out of this connector are 12 gauge wires, and then it goes down into a 14 gauge. There's no reason for this other than this has 14 gauge and I have 12 gauge. It's fine. So this has already been stubbed out and measured in the car for uh, where it's gonna go. I'll show you where I mount, where I mount this and stuff like that. So uh, each prong on the relay is labeled uh, six, seven, five, and zero uh, with the associated um, things there. So. We have uh, one's the ground, which you can see here. Five is going to be our ground. Then we have uh, our power, which is going to come from the battery. And zero is going to be our power. Then we have our bridge. And when I say bridge, I mean the one that uh, completes the circuit from the car to the pump. So in this case, our um, yellow, which is six, and seven and seven six and seven are going to be our bridge one goes to the car the other one goes to the pump itself and, and it completes the circuit and blah 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 so the way um so it doesn't have to be fancy like this uh it's just you know just how i made it but where i normally mount these relays is back here behind this panel uh there's already a threaded hole here so I just use that spot and then I loop the ground around to the back here. Now, before you say, oh, this is plastic, you can't bolt the ground to plastic to metal, you can, this is fine. And if this makes you uncomfortable, you can put a washer in between the tab here and there, but this, this is perfectly acceptable, it's fine. Um, in other situations, I'll actually mount it lower. There's actually a grounding block down here, but uh, in this car, I'm gonna mount it up here. It, it doesn't make any difference. So that's gonna live there and then the harness will live under here and wrap around, right? The power wire is gonna go here to our green, which is why it's the longest. So that's gonna connect that like that. And then we have our constant from our battery, which connects here um, to our blue. And then we have uh, our yellow, which is our uh, bridge. This is from the car. So this is, gonna, this is what triggers our relay. Um, and that, that goes to our to our yellow. So all these connections are gonna be made under here. Now, as far as splices go, there are a lot of different techniques and different products out there. Um, this is this is how we do it now, anyway. Uh, just the bare terminals. These bare ones, we crimp them down and we stick them in here, and then we put a piece of shrink wrap over top, and that's our that's our connection there. And that's how we do that. So with the wiring, right? Uh, it's ran through the factory plug. So if you peel the tape back through that boot, you can actually run both of these wires. Um, I don't have any more, but uh, I always put a two pin connector on the other end of this so that when you, when and if for whatever reason you need to service your fuel pump, it's just one connector in the back. You unplug it and it, it just comes off as if it were stock. So the, the primary connector that goes to the hanger, which is now just for our, our fuel level and our, um, 
uh, our fuel low light. You would unplug that, you would take the little ground off, and then there's one extra two pin connector which will go on the other end of this, and then the whole thing comes out just, just like factory, you know? So uh, there's no like additional things here. Because if we fully commit this, then we have an unbroken wire from the hanger through this into the car, and that's just, it's not serviceable. So we need to add a connector in there, which I will do after the fact. I just don't have any right now. So, and that'll live under all of this. All right, okay. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna strip all these wires back. We're gonna make all our connections, put our shrink wrap, uh, melt it down, and um, this install will basically be complete. And this is what it looks like all crimped. So you got your two crimps there and your main one there. So now you can slide your shrink wrap over top like so. Then uh, you'll go ahead and melt these. And that's that for the back. Um, of course, this ground is going to go here and that'll be fine. And then this ground is going to go here. And that's how that lives just like that. Now, there are a few implications here because I didn't go over it. This wire here, which is our main battery wire, goes to the battery. Or it goes to a left-hand drive, because this is right-hand drive. In a left-hand drive car, you can also run this wire to the fuse box. Um, on the interior fuse box, there are two uh, prongs up top, and I'll put a picture in so you can see what I'm talking about. But instead of going all the way to the battery to the front of the car, you could you can go there. If your battery is relocated to your bins, you can go there. Uh, in a right-hand drive car, um, you can do the same thing and go to the fuse box. It'll just run that way and then run across the trunk. Uh, you don't have to go to the battery. It just needs a solid 12 volt source. And at the fuse box, that, that terminal is exactly that. So it won't make any difference if, if it's direct to the battery or to that fuse box. But for easier and cleaner install, I would recommend going uh, to the fuse box there. An inline fuse holder also needs to be put in place uh, with this battery, with the, the battery wire, the main battery wire. You're gonna put a 20 amp in there. Um, it's just, just what you're gonna use. Sorry, I wish I had a better explanation for you. But that's how that'll go. Uh, the fuel pump resistor that lives under your brake booster, this car doesn't have one, but what you'll do is um, you'll unplug it, you'll cut the plug, or you'll cut the wires off of the resistor end, and then you're gonna bridge the two wires together, and then that's gonna be a bridge because uh, you need that wire. So you're not gonna leave the resistor in line with this new circuit here, you're, you're gonna delete it entirely, and um, just bridge the two wires together. And then that'll be your whole fuel pump rewire. Now, there are people out there who do this differently. Um, there are kits out there you can buy. There's, there's a variety of ways you can do this. My, my way is not the way to do it. It's just one of the ways to do it. And even then, you don't even have to do it the way I did it. You could do it and do, it this, do this part differently or that part differently, do whatever you want. Just use it as a guide. But for the most part, this covers all of the weak links in a OEM or OEM plus fuel system. You can be confident knowing that all this is going to be fine. The most important part of this whole circuit is the relay. Do not use any cheap, janky Bobo relays. You're going to use a Bosch relay. It doesn't have to be this one, like this gray one. Bosch makes a few different versions of this, but it will be a uh, 12 volt uh, relay. But so long as it's a 12 volt name brand relay, you'll be fine. As far as the holders, you can get them anywhere. This one came from Amazon. Uh, they don't come all 14 gauge wire like this one is. Some of them are 14, some of them are different gauge. What I did, because they come in a five pack, is I'll scavenge the other 14 gauge wires and put them in here so they're all 14. So you can do that. Or if you can just find one of these that has all 14s, then do that too, or 12s, whatever. Just don't get one that has like 16 or some other janky gauge wire on there. So that will be your fuel pump rewire tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Uh, if you tried it, cool. If you didn't, also cool. If you watched this for fun, even better. Appreciate it. So full detail automotive, we're out here in Tampa. If you guys want us to do this for you, if you don't feel like doing it yourself uh, or if you don't feel confident or whatever, we're here. You can send your car here, or, uh, drive up, come visit or whatever. We don't have our own kit 
per se, like the thing that I made here, uh, we make this individually for every car. We don't just have one we pull off the shelf and just use it. So maybe one day we will have a universal version, but each car is unique in um, the way that we do this. So uh, unfortunately for now, you can't exactly buy this setup, but you can make your own because I showed you how. But anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.